Greeting interwebs, it is Jackie K, and welcome for another edition of our Let's Go Eevee adventure. We made a sea full miles and did some work through it, and in our stumbling throughout the cave, we came across the legendary Pokemon Articuno. Let's get into it. We kind of see the gimmick with how the rare Pokemon work in this game when fighting Snorlax, but I don't think that's going to take away from this particular moment any less. Man. Oh, and he's got a little freeze attack. Got, got that little freeze effect in the battle itself. Alright. I can't believe they both match timer on us, too, so. Game plan as before to start with Glissy Glow just to, like, give us a little special attack boost. Or special defense boost. And it looks like Arakuno is thinking the same thing. You know what I could have done? I could have got Rock Slide. Onto my Doug Trio. That would have made a lot of difference in of itself. But I don't think like it's going to be too hard. Like, as cool of a gimmick as this is, this is not the hard part. Or this is not going to be the annoying part. Okay, maybe it will be the hard part. I'm kind of wondering if I should have went for paralyzing it better than burning it, but I was kind of just more in the mindset of fire is good! Or, it is I type to use fire moves against it, even though it's flying, so the electric moves would have been just the good itself. I guess the problem with bringing Tina Eddie even if I did have Rock Slide on my side is the whole factor that, like, it'd be ground so it could be weak. Mm. I'm debating whether to keep Jen and Girl in, but, you know, I think we can, like, get Gamble 8 out here now rather than later. Mm. Mostly because she's more bulky, can take the hit, dish out Thunderbolts as may be. But we could also have a little fun in the process. We can see if luck is on our side, and do a little gambling. Assuming if, I know one way that luck would really not be on our side, and I'm not even gonna jinx it. Surprise it hasn't happened yet. Low kick. Really? <laughs> I think the burn did worse. Oh, wait, was that really a reflect and not a light screen? Oh, that was the Articuno that did the play screen. So this whole time, I was wasting time on nothing. Oof. Right. Because Jen Girl set it up that life screen a little earlier on. That's the only reason we weren't getting obliterated by this thing. I really shouldn't be playing around. And yet here I am. No, you did good Gambalaya. I but it's my own fault. If I just went for the Thunderbolts, you wouldn't have to go for this. But just as I, can, I just can't justify swapping another Pokemon just to have it get hit by the Ice Beam. In terms of, I guess that burn is useful for me, if nothing else, because I don't have to worry about the whole... I don't have to worry about the fact that I kind of just wasted two turns because it was slowly getting chipped away anyways. Alright, Jen Girl. All you need to do is outspeed. And you got this. Oh, oh dear. Oof. Well, thankfully for the power of friendship, we'll never be sad. And we'll never truly fall in the heat of battle. And now for the anticlimactic part where I just, like, throw a Pokeball, just swing my arm over and over and over. Until Ashley gets it. And I know this is going to be annoying because I've had to re-catch my legendary Pokemon when I transferred them from home. And God, I've hated every single minute of the process. Do... Ugh. What a shame, you're so close to catching it too. How come I don't believe that? How come I call shenanigans on the bandwagon? 
Yeah, I could use berries to make it easier to catch. But I also have a shadow of a doubt that it'll actually make a difference. Like, I could use like a silver raspberry or a gold raspberry if I had it. But the problem with using berries is if you use one and it doesn't work in catching it, then it just breaks out and that berry goes completely to waste. You never get it back. So, I was thinking we like start with. I think if. I have enough like normal raspberries, I could at least use them for this. And then there's like the whole process of trying to like get the bird to stay in the ball. The, the nice thing about using gyro mode for this is you can actually like, adjust your screen around as the Pokemon moves. Which helps with making it catch a little bit. The downside is that it's pretty much impossible to like do the fancy curveballs and other things that kind of help make it easy too. Okay, now I'm starting to be really tempted to pull out player two and just to cheat a little and make things a little bit easier. Alright. Now I'll wait for you to come to me. One, the two is this gonna be it? Of course not. The fun part is that they can run away if you take too long to catch it. I'm not sure if it's based on like how many times you fail to catch it, or just how long you spend in this screen trying to capture it in general. Maybe even a combination of the two. Who knows what the science behind it is? <laughs> to be fair though, as annoying as that was, that was still better than like most legendary Pokemon capture events in the main series games, like where you're like this is, this is still easier than that. And I would prefer, as annoying as I find the catching mini game in Let's Go Eevee in times like this, I would prefer this over like resetting 20 different times in front of a legendary just because I failed to catch it. Now for the part that's actually going to take the whole episode, <laughs> trying to get out of this place. Actually, have I ever captured a shelter yet? Well, let's find out. A one, a two. Well, I guess we gotta get the little guy first. I think, like, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. I think a major element missing from Let's Go, the Let's Go games, compared to some of the other Kanto remakes of the game. It's the fact that like it takes so long to get to water types. Here we go. Like this is the first prominent route where they're readily available, and you don't even ha and they're not even exclusive to actually being in the water. Like that, like that. Magic carbon in particular, like yeah, there was a little time period between the merchant. And when you can fish them out on your own in Verlinga City, but at least it's not too far away. Meanwhile here, you pretty much have to wait until you get to the game's equivalent of Surf before even be able to get access to one water type. I guess there would be one exception if you like use that Squirtle that you got from the officer, but still, not too many options when it comes to water type. Actually, yeah, actually when I remember more, things like the Krabby that we got over on the route opposite of the old bike route technically did come before being able to surf. But, you know, I don't think I showcased this guy, and I missed out on doing of the Dugon I caught on my own, so it's probably be for the best to actually get this one. And on a little bit of a tangent, maybe while I'm trying to make my way out of here, just in case I accidentally pick up a little bit of experience along the way, I'm just gonna swap order back in the party, just cause I'm too cheap to use a revive. And 
Order needs experience badly anyways. So just in case I stumbled into some more wild Pokemon trying to find my way out of here. Now I could use the escape rope, but that would take me back in the end that we started. And I think a goal for here, the reason I really was dreading doing this place, was I actually I actually wanted to get to the other side of this. I honestly have no idea how I'm gonna get to the other side. This is the reason why it's a huge childhood dread, deceitful miles. Cause once you get Articuno, yes, you could actually try to find your way out. But with how confusing it is for me, I never seen a reason to. You can just, like, go surf over in one of the other routes. You just go surf from Palatown to get to Cinnabar Isles. Why stumble your way through a cave when you don't even need to waste the time stumbling your way through a cave? For the viewers here, I suppose it's... The only reason I'm bothering is for sake of pride. This is silly. There has to be another side to this place that I'm overlooking. I'm gonna just follow the pillars down here. I think I'm just back where I started, like for the tenth time. No, screw it. I guess it's just fated to be that I will never actually get through the Seafoam Isles properly. I think I more than demonstrated exactly why I don't even want to bother with this place beyond getting the legendary Pokemon. Now, did I heal, like, heal everyone? Or do I gotta swap Gambalea back out in order to get her healed as well? It does seem like I gotta swap Gamelay back in, so you know I'm just gonna do that now before I get real caught up in the things. So, assuming I cut out all that fiddling around in Steam Foam Isles after I caught Articuno because it was completely pointless, I guess I do have time. It's kind of like. I'm kind of in a weird spot because I feel too early to end apart, but at the same time, I definitely don't don't believe we'll have the time to finish up what I actually want to do next. But you know what? I'm gonna just do it, and if it's really, 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 really too long, I'll just continue. I'll just split it on my own. Really. The game's gonna make me. Ugh, I know in like fire. I know in at least fire red, you could just like fly to that Route Ten Poke Center, and that would save us so much time. But no, they're actually gonna make. Ugh, they're actually gonna make me walk from Cerulean City all the way over there just so I can surf on that water we weren't at before. So be it. I guess we'll be able to make this an episode. I guess we'll start hunting down the second legendary Pokemon next episode. After all. Because by the time me and Order get over... There. It'll definitely be too long in and of itself. Bum, 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 bum. Now, arguably, I guess I could cut as well, especially if they don't really like getting stars to do go through. Kind of getting a little amusement, like I kind of wish I had my switch controller so I could get a screenshot because. A little earlier on, I kind of looked like that bug catcher was facing down against the Nidoriya. And, I don't know, that just amused me. Did I really not get this item? Probably also never fought this trainer. I really shouldn't be testing my luck because they're probably like completely underleveled. Yeah, all that for just like five Pokeballs. 
totally worth it. I mean, I didn't get caught up in the fight, so it's what it is. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, we're already here, so... Yeah, it's all stuff, a lot of stuff we're gonna have to decide in editing. But now that we actually have Sea Skim, we can actually go across this area here. And this is much shorter than the way to Seafoam Mile, so I don't even think it's like it's worth swapping around. What do you have going on, sir? Wow, you came all the way here too? Maybe you're a Pokemaniac too. Wanna see my collection? No, but something tells me I don't gotta say in the matter. I get the feeling this is an offer I can't refuse. Got Rhyhorn here. Come on out, Jenna girl. Don't see any reason why not. Oh yeah, I re I also just remembered that I was gonna like change my move set around, so I actually had stuff more suited for the power plant. Get like either my water or grass move back on here. But then again, I'm probably overthinking things a little bit. Not gonna be that hard. Pardon me. Eh, maybe I'm pushing my luck. But like I keep saying, Order needs some more experience. Order needs some more time to shine in battle. And this is not a bad matchup for Order. Order is technically... Higher in level. We can make this work out, right? I suppose. Oh, guess it. Guess I'm gonna be turning my little ostrich friend into a three headed glass cannon. Cause something tells me if this doesn't take it out, then I might get taken out in return. All that said though. Ah, it might be a little short of a part, especially if I decide to cut. But I don't really feel confident that, like, I can go through the entire entirety of this power plant without overstaying anyone's welcome. Power plant. Huh, that's it? No little descriptor there? Well, I know the first thing I'm gonna do. If you couldn't tell, the power plant's full of electric types. So... Order? Uh, this isn't exactly your time to shine. I mean, like, I guess Hoopalele is not... You know what, Order can stay in for the experience. And I'll switch... Switch Hoopalele with... Tina Eddy. Because Tina Eddy is actually... Thinking more about it is the Pokemon I'm actually going to want for this place anyways. So... I'm going to end this episode off here. Thank you all for tuning in for another edition of Let's Go Eevee. Next time in our adventures, we'll take on the power plant. Hopefully getting another legendary Pokemon along the way. Until then though, take care. I didn't want to spend the whole episode on just revisiting this route. So apologies for being in a rush. While I'm over here, let me at least see if I can figure out where this end connects. It's the main one, even if we don't actually go down through it. Plus, I might be able to get a couple more items that I would have missed out on if I didn't bother at all. It does certainly look like that these ends connect. I don't know how they connect, but it certainly looks that way. I... I was just here. I... I don't remember... I don't remember how I got here. But I just remember a couple parts ago making the joke of... Oh, it looks like you just like hop across these rocks. But no, they don't think that far ahead. And like, no, I can't jump through the rocks, but I can just surf through that area and I'm just like... Well, so close, yes, so far, Jackie K. 
The answer to how to get to the other end was in front of you the whole time, and yet you never... You still have never actually gotten to the other end of Seafoam Isles. And likely at this rate, 